Salutations, migrant, and welcome to the Commonwealth, the most secure and prosperous nation in the whole galaxy. We are proud that you have decided to choose one of our worlds as your new residence, for the Commonwealth welcomes all into its borders, regardless of shape, form or origin. Here, we all work together towards brighter future for all sentience of our nation. It is understandable that many of you may find our customs and culture confusing, which is why we, the Ministry of Migration, decided to prepare this short presentation to help you learn something about our new home. By the time you're done watching, your immigration documents should be processed by our administration, at which point you will be free to enter Commonwealth, armed with some basic knowledge that will help you find your way around. So, without further ado, let us get right to the presentation. The first thing you will inevitably notice, probably even within the customs office, is an extreme diversity of species that inhabit the Commonwealth. Ever since our very first encounter with Alir Commune, humanity takes pride in its policy of open doors that allow citizens of other nations to settle within our territory without need for prolonged procedures. And we're not talking only about allied nations. The Commonwealth is also open to people seeking refuge. After all, the galaxy is a dangerous place, and it is our duty to help those in need, especially those who flee bloodthirsty and despotic regimes. More than that, this aforementioned diversity is celebrated by all people of the Commonwealth, so you can always expect a warm welcome. But perhaps most importantly, you can expect accommodations suited to your particular biology, for we wish for nothing more than for our new citizens to live in comfortable conditions. Now, let us assume that your admission has been approved, and unless you are a criminal with an intergalactic warrant or a dis berserker, you should encounter no issues. Once you leave the shuttle port, you may be surprised by seeming lack of any movement, or, in fact, any obvious signs of life. Worry not, however, for all you have to do to uncover true face of our nation is to look beneath the surface, literally. That's right, according to official statistics, around 90% of planetary life within the Commonwealth happens underground. The cities and skyscrapers may rise hundreds of meters into the sky, but the streets are almost exclusively below ground, in order to shelter citizens from the elements. Over the last two and a half century, humanity moved underground almost completely for several reasons that will be covered in a separate presentation, one dealing with history and culture of our founding species. Now, we are aware that some of you may not find this state of affairs perfect. After all, there are many races out there who prefer living in more open conditions. Because of that, special districts have been prepared to house those who prefer to live closer to the sky and sun, and almost every other district has an open skylight park, large glass-domed public areas, perfect for some rest and relaxation. At this point, many of you would probably ask, why are these parks domed? Can't they simply be open like regular parks? The answer is, unfortunately, no, they cannot. Which brings us to another topic, climate. Unless you've chosen one of the Aramathi planets, or Utkavonga colony of Sinir, located at the very edge of the galaxy, you will very quickly realize that planets of the Commonwealth have one thing in common. They're cold. Extremely cold, or even downright freezing to some. For example, during last 200 years, the highest recorded temperature on Ortus was mere 16 degrees Celsius, with average being around minus 15 degrees, and vegetation period lasting less than two or three weeks per standard year. Which is one of the main reasons why majority of infrastructure remains safely hidden underground, where all public spaces are heated to a comfortable temperature of 5 degrees Celsius. But while it may be comfortable to human citizens, it may cause some discomfort to new arrivals, some of which may be unsuited to such low temperatures, especially paired with very dry, arid climate of our planets. Fortunately for you, however, Commonwealth's law ensures your comfort. Once your admission has been approved, a machine will take your measurements, and within two or three days you will receive your very own Enviro suit that will let you maintain whatever level temperature or humidity you desire. Not to mention that every single apartment is equipped with an obligatory thermoregulation unit. So, as you can see, the climate, while harsh, should pose no problem for you, nor for any other citizen. Just don't be surprised when you see a group of humans in t-shirts and shorts running around in temperatures that makes water freeze. Now then, on to a bit less material topic, the society of the Commonwealth and its ideals. There are many virtues that are celebrated by our citizens, like hard work, camaraderie and tolerance, but none stands higher than wisdom. Wisdom is the foundation upon which Commonwealth has been built. It is the reason why our ancestors managed to survive in this place, and it enabled us to turn ourselves from a handful of pitiful refugees into one of the major players on the galactic scene. 
In short, Commonwealth revolves around wisdom. As you surely know, our technological advances are a source of pride across the galaxy, and our scientists and their experience are considered to be one of the most valuable commodities across the stars. The minds of the Commonwealth are our greatest assets, and the state ensures that an exceptional intelligence will be exceptionally rewarded, for it is the best investment for us all. Because of that, public education is available to all citizens, regardless of their age and race. Excel in your studies, and you too may join the ranks of scholars, best and brightest minds, not only in the Commonwealth, but in the entire galaxy, and bring the future to us all. But the virtue of wisdom is not just about research, it permeates the entire society. Logic is considered to be the greatest guide of all, impassioned minds and burning hearts are cooled and directed by it. Humanity proved, many times over, that recklessness and impulsiveness leads to nothing but misery for everyone involved. Only here, however, in this galaxy, we have truly learned and mastered this lesson, and we hope you will too. Wisdom is also another thing, making informed decisions. Because of that, Commonwealth's political system is a special form of democracy, a true one, where every citizen can vote on all matters of state, save for a handful of emergency ones. No legislation can be passed in secret, no fine prints can be smuggled into official government contracts. All is transparent, and every citizen has a right to make their decisions based on full, unaltered data. Once you become a citizen yourself, you will receive a special data pad that you are obliged to carry with you at all times, that will enable you to make decisions about the future of our nation, and lead it towards a great and prosperous future. Now, since we are talking about virtues, there is one that isn't officially recognized, but it is a sort of unwritten rule, one that is teached, from very early days, to all citizens of our country. That rule is do not hold grudges, and its origin is rooted deep in history of humanity. Because of grudges and disputes from nearly half a millennium ago, humanity was nearly wiped out to the last man. In time when unity and cooperation were needed most, those grudges caused us to turn on each other, even when our entire world was falling apart around us. No longer, said people of Orters. No longer are we driven by our anger for slights of previous generations. No longer will we let bad blood between us cloud our judgment. That rule applies to all, to us, citizens of the Commonwealth, and to others. And while it may be true that not all galactic civilizations agree with us, we will not hold grudges against them, for stars only know when we may need unity to save ourselves again. Now then, that concludes the introductory presentation, but we wanted to address one specific question that often appears among the new arrivals – badges. You will inevitably notice that almost every citizen wears a little badge on their clothes, or their body, should they hail from one of the more frivolous galactic societies. These badges indicate affiliation with one of work unions of old OCN, and were adopted by citizens who were proud of their work and heritage. And although the unions may not have even a fraction of power they used to have, their badges, and their system of naming various jobs, remained in popular use. The marks are as follows. Delvers, Astrodelvers, Tenders, Masons and Astromasons are the ones who build our society. Rangers and Marshals maintain the peace, be it in the wild frontier or in the great continent-spanning cities of Ortus. Ciphers, healers, scholars and skippers maintain our nation across the stars, while shipwrights, deckers and triggers ensure that dangers of the galaxy are kept at arm's length. So, that covers badges that you will inevitably see during your days in the Commonwealth. If you have any other question, please submit it after processing. If not, proceed into the next room, where all formalities will be finished. Congratulations, migrant, your application has been approved, and you are now officially a citizen. May you and the entire Commonwealth prosper among the stars.